Welcome back to Broad's League Heroes! Protoss versus Protoss on World of Sleepers, but I'm asking you to wake up. Because in the bottom left, it is Legend! Dairy. And in the town prime. Free Siegfriedow. Fred. I'm just gonna plug this into Google Translate. And uh, bi uh, Sieg. And and Google Translate. We're just gonna ignore what's happening on the mini map for a moment. I'm gonna guess Brazilian. And by Brazilian, I obviously mean Spanish. Um, or something geese. Oh no, what's happening? Oh, how am I gonna type it in? I don't know how to do that character on an English keyboard. Siegfriedow. Yeah, we're gonna go with, with Fred. Um, that's my takeaway there. Anyways. Fred, in the top right. Finding himself with a painfully small amount of bases. He's got two gates. He's got gas for when he needs it. Whereas Legend Derry has gone for half of the bingo strat so far. Everybody knows. You take all four corners, boom. That's a bingo. Doesn't win you a ladder game, but wins you respect. And also sometimes like books or maybe small amounts of money or food. Uh, it depends on the crowd you roll with. But these players, they roll however the wind blows because it doesn't really seem, it's not so much a plan as a feeling, these builds so far. We have multiple gates, some zealots, three out of four for the bingo. Of course, there is a nexus on the other side, legendary, with a big dodge there on the zealots, finds his way into the main. Gonna see, I don't know what he expected to see, but he'll he'll get a bead on the fact that there is indeed gateways. Um, that's about it. I'm not sure if that's gonna tell him anything uh, or really affect his build, as Fred just continues to build up on his small, tiny, insignificant corner. Legendary has hard walled off his base. He's taking these zealots very seriously. But he is not taking his natural, because that would be ridiculous. Fred. He's, he's heard the legends, and not of his opponent, but instead of expansions, of taking a second base. He said, no. How could you? Not, not a rhetorical question, a literal one. How does one pull that one off? But... Without warp gate. Now, this is the genius move. Florencio has shown us. Well, will, will the pro make it? This time, there's a stalker to con contest it. Wait. First blood. Down goes the pro. So you might be like, not researching warp gate. Even those silver protoss in the YouTube comments know that. Warp gate is good. Well, Florencio has taught us that. How are you going to queue up? You know, you can't queue up warp gate. Units. You can't queue up multiple charges. This ain't co-op. This is the ladder. So in not going for warp gate, he's both saved money and the effort of of having to warp in on a regular base. Just queue up four or five zealots at a time. Eventually, those zealots will build. It's not about it's not about how quickly you're able to get the zealots. It's about how you use them. So uh, glad to see Fred being such a patient player. Another probe, though. He just keeps finding these probes and sending them out. A Stargate. He's still building everything at his natural because it's unlikely that Fred has the minimap DLC, so he doesn't know other bases on the map exist. Uh, he's going to focus, laser focus, towards the center. 
a couple cannons, a couple pylons. C the Wings of Liberty campaign missions tell us that killing pylons is very important, but he can't get to them with the zealots. Going for the cyber core. The cyber core, the building with the most HP in this wall, but the stalkers do outrange it. The zealots unfortunately do not. The Stargate is about to complete, but the Cybernetics Core will crumble. And there's a probe on the other side waiting for its moment. Comes in. Dozens of actions every single minute going into this complicated strider. In fact, wow, Legendary boldly slaps a Nexus right at his natural. Another cannon. The Stalkers, though, the Stalker count from Fred. Is looking very dangerous and very deadly. Down goes the forge. Now here's the problem. The problem even. What happens if the stalkers actually break through? They're working on it. He's working around the edges. He's trying to find an angle. He's acutely aware of how dangerous cannons are. But at the same time, when it comes to looking at the minimap, he seems a little uh, obtuse. Plus one on the way. Shield batteries in the main. A uh, cannon rush, no, a pylon rush, like the good old days of early Legacy of the Void. He's going to try to get the cannons, the probe, crouching probe, hidden cannons, but not this time. Fred slaps it down and knocks the probe out. But what are we looking at here? We see significantly higher income. This is the new Pro 2020 overlay. Uh, made for I Am Katowice and other major events, but released for everyone. Um, and I think, I can't think of a more appropriate overlay than the pro one. So, each of these ticks, it's 500 extra mineral income to that player, and then 100 more gas income. So, for example, right now, uh, there's over a thousand more mineral income. I think it's 500. I see three ticks. I'm not 100% sure. It's like 500 ish. It's a lot more. More is better. I don't know if it goes to four. Whereas the gas is a couple hundred more there. I need to get exact numbers on that. At some point, I'll test it. But uh, up is good, down is bad. We all know this. All right. Everyone here is shorting Kodak, right? Because take a picture of this wall and then move on. The stasis ward. Wait a second. Hold right there. You don't have a choice. The Stalkers going head-to-head -head with the cannons. The cannons. There are multiple shield batteries. He's just going to keep going straight at it. I appreciate the focus. The one-dimensional gameplay. While, you know, you might be like, why doesn't he just go look for the other bases? Well, this is the heart of Legendary Space. If he's able to get rid of these, I don't know, 7, 8, 12 cannons, 4, 5, 6 shield batteries. Oh. Legendary now looking to be cost-effective, or he hardwalled himself in. I'm not sure which one it was. The worker count right now, 57 probes. 57. Against just 23. Siegfried. He's got his own cannons. He's inspired, obviously. He's teching up. He's getting some more gas, so he can do his uh, Archon transition, or whatever direction he may take. A fleet bacon is nearly... Finished grilling. And what are we going to see? A Tempest. A Tempest. Which is a Stargate unit that you can build. And Legendary is building it. Meanwhile, a forward operating base for Legendary. He's putting together several cannons. Several batteries. The mineral cost is no object. As the Vespine gas is what we're really out for. Ten cannons. The CPM. The cannons per minute. Reaching near critical levels. Legendary is now averaging as many actions per minute as a grandfather clock. You might be like, well, Winter, that's not exactly how clocks work. Okay. You got it. It's it's a it's a decent joke. But you know what's not a joke? The seriousness of this cannon push. He's got batteries behind. He's got cannons in front. But if you turn it around, it's the other way. It's all about perspective. Speaking of, it looks like these zealots have been enlightened. 
There are cannons. There is a mothership on the way. Legendary is spending his money on these static defenses, which a key point of this as he works towards completing that bingo strat is that cannons do not move. We see 26 cannons in just 10 minutes, with four more in the mail right now. We're looking at three CPM, let alone what's happening on Siegfried's side of the map, which would already be a substantial number of cannons, all on its own, but in comparison, it's nothing. The oracles are here. I don't know what kind of revelations he's looking to have. Stasis, making sure that there is no risk. In fact, it, I, that's, yeah, okay, um, the stasis, he's sneaking up on him, he's learned what stasis ward is, and he's gonna use it, he's, he's waiting for his moment, okay, yes, all right, and he's made it in, stop right there, probes, stop it, you think about what you've done, I was just here to mine, you too! The masterful baits, but wait! There's more. Oh, another one. Oh, he didn't... None of these units actually die, unlike the Oracle. But the emotional damage is beyond the amount of resources on this map to repair. The only counter to a bad guy with a bunch of cannons, as Siegfried knows, is a good guy with a bunch of cannons. Wow. The Forge Lobby really making bank here today. Unlike these players, wait, I take it back. Legendary has 3,200 minerals, 1,900 gas, and a dream. It's not about how much money it takes. It's about whether you win or you lose. A win's a win if it's two minutes or two hours. A win's a win if it takes killing all of his buildings or him leaving with a less than savory comment. A win is a win even if you lose your army as long as you can take the victory. The Warp Prisms! Outflanking the cannons, which isn't the most difficult thing to do, but what a play! The Tempests are here, the forward base. Oh, he's gonna try to dodge back, which is possibly the only way this could go horribly wrong. But a revelation shield batteries will keep the warp prisms intact as the tempest siege begins a mothership is here the supply surprisingly even select all armies unfortunately uh making things difficult shield batteries wow that's a lot of range on that shield battery but the stalkers target the tempest one of the warp prisms almost dies outright another tempest and the oracle legendary is getting too cute all his unit he, he just isn't able to manage it he can manage the buildings he's an architecture major okay but when it comes to the finesse and the tactics and the um uh micro and decision making required with the mothership it's just oh it's tough well what you can't see will most certainly kill you thankfully though uh siegfried realizes that in time immortals immortals one of the top five counters to cannons i will agree uh the mini map is quite a place but we're not worried about that now you've got to stop them somewhere Siegfried draws the line in a, in a slight curve Meanwhile, another cannon rush, legendary, back to basics. Are there any extra pylons here? Are there enough stalkers? To, that's a lot. Of, he's really actually quite good at these cannons. There's a recall. Where did those stalk? Okay, some stalkers. Oh, yeah, there's a mineral wall here. Remember World of Sleepers. Some of the units are a lot of cannons. There's a lot happening. Immortals, though. Immortals, very important. I think there are enough units. I'm not, he's doing a lot of target fire. Meanwhile, Mothership sneaking in, looking for a total recall. Oh wait, a time warp. And another time warp, yeah. Those probes are not gonna meet their quotas today. No, they aren't. 
So, yeah. Get out of here, mothership. Ugh. <sighs> Did you know the mothership has seven attacks? Which means anything with armor keeps it from essentially... Like, motherships are more... Like, they're not so much for doing damage as doing emotional damage. Like many of your mothers out there. Instead of actually hurting you, they make you feel bad about your accomplishments, and they make it hard to really tell what you're supposed to be doing with your life. Oh, I apologize. She's a, she's a nice lady. Um, I was speaking of someone else, of course. Oh, what a spread. I can't believe it's not butter. We've got a dozen cannons with a beauti beautiful plating here in this base. I really like the way he has the pylons, and then he has the cannons. But then he also has the pylons. So, and batteries. Boom, didn't see that one coming. Because of damaged health bars and the fact that batteries are the only thing that starts with full energy. But there you go. Oh, a Tempest in a Mothership. Name a more iconic combo. I'll wait. Because this could take a while. I have time. Like, give me your top 20. Okay, top 10 is fine. Oh, the cannons. The cannons on both sides. Uh, a real difficulty for terrestrial units. Okay. Oh, he's going to go straight for it. Not everyone can get involved. But there's a lot of Immortals crab walking their way forward. A whole lot of shield batteries. I believe this predates shield battery overcharge. But I'm not sure if that would factor in. Here comes the mothership in the detection. Wait, there is no detection. But the mothership can't quite be motivated to move far enough. Going for the pylons. So Siegfried left with a nice amount of supply. And... Okay, there was a recall. I'm not sure what recall. The mothership recalled one oracle, which is, I mean, that oracle, hashtag oracle privilege. Uh, really? What is that? Like, that, it's the mothership's daughter, that oracle. And, and, um, what's his face? Gerard Butler has to save her before the cannon nation attacks and all the immortals overrun the proxy nexus and this is becoming a very confusing scenario but don't worry explosions cannons wait who's can those are all ca cannon shield battery all right well Siegfried is mining off three bases both players have plenty of gas in the bank uh if they ever decide to build units that really use it there's plus two shields and plus two air armor, and about to be plus three air armor as Legendary is playing some of the most aggressive defense I have ever seen. The Tempest, yes, the Tempest, the Tempest University. Schooling Legendary, I mean Siegfried, and, and helping him learn what units actually can outrange it. Still no detection. That's a stasis right up front. Oh, oh my god. Wow. Oh, okay. He lifts up one immortal and everyone else is just going to have to go into timeout. All right. The immortal hits the ground. Barrier is utilized. Oracles are fighting one stalker. One stalker is winning. Because the shield batteries, well, he's not going to be able to play his Game Boy after this, but he is going to still have a Stalker. Everybody comes unfrozen. The game is unpaused. The mothership moving up. Still no detection. Well, if you can't see it, it can't hurt you. Still not true. The time warp warps everything. Legendary has many of these bases. This this is Legendary's base here. Uh, he's got over 9,000 minerals. I'm not sure Observer Tech has been discovered. Right now, the Siegfried is exploiting one of the major weaknesses of Legendary Strategy. It's that while the Mothership is, is obviously massive and covers a wide swath of area in its shadow, appropriately named, it still can't quite cloak the entire cannon line. 
So if only you could build a second mothership, that might solve the problems here. But barring that, I don't know how he's going to solve this. There's a void ray. There's a carrier. As we get the whole variety pack of Stargate units. Wait. We have a... We actually do have at least one of every Stargate unit. Uh, we have three Tempests, one Carrier, two Void Rays, three Phoenixes, four Oracles, better known as Foracles, and a Mothership. A Mothership, not technically a Stargate unit, but don't be the guy who draws that distinction. The Mothership is gone. I, it just kind of floated off into the sunset. Something happened here, and I think Siegfried's starting to realize there might be more bases on this map. But it doesn't matter. The Immortals just bash through the entire cannon line until they don't. Or until they do. All right. Remotivated after a quick rest break. They make their way back. The, the Tempest staying inside the shield battery. The Mothership lost and possibly forgotten. The forward base taken out, and it looks like Siegfried is on the cusp of being ahead on supply. And and when it comes to army supply, it's 62 to 48. The upgrades, plus three attack on the ground. The Tempest, Tempesting, or a, as it do. <gasps> the pylon saved at the last second, time warp as well, getting involved. Meanwhile, oh, another Tempest! You came to the wrong neighborhood, but my friend said it was a good neighborhood. There were cannons everywhere. Not anymore! <laughs> the Tempest continues. The energy of the shield batteries regenerating slightly slower than the damage the Tempest can output. But only very slightly. The Immortals, another, there are 33 cannons on the map. So far, 38 cannons have died. Going for the pylons, regretting that decision. Plus two shields on the cannons, which is something that exists. The stalkers are desperately trying to get to the Tempest, but there is a hard wall of cannons that is sig like there. No, 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 that is off. Yeah, they're a long way off. There's gonna have to be a whole lot of work done here to get to this situation. I don't. Oh wait, uh, what? It wasn't a wall. They just couldn't figure it out. Everybody was tripping over each other. The Immortals with their stupid Dragoon legs. The Stalkers with their stupid Stalker legs. The Tempest battling. The Mothership is here. Another Tempest. Carriers. Oracles. Void Rays. Phoenix. Oracles. Stalkers. Um, crazy legs. Batteries. Cannons. And I have named almost everything here. Immortals. Four Stargates on the way. Stargate Command has finally been produced. And it looks like Siegfried has had enough. He's going to send everything to the other side. One Tempest will not stop him. But there are several cannons waiting for him. There's not that many pylons, so that might actually be a strategy here. <gasps> a single carrier has arrived! There are probes being transferred, but attack move is but a distant dream. The carrier's exposed. Where are the shield batteries? They're back at the other side. The Tempest has pulled back. The probes are here to build more cannons because what else? What else would the probes do? They can't build a Nexus because he put a stasis board right where a Nexus is supposed to go. Why let that stop you? Anyways, the mineral wall has been mined out. He opened up the base for his opponent. He mined through the mineral wall, and now the cannons, once again, as we saw before, the cannons just kind of don't defend anything. It's a little late for this legendary. Oh, Siegfried realizes, almost went around for a sec, but the wall is too late. Siegfried, you are the architect of your own demise. Everyone's coming home. He felt he had this on lock. He has 12,800 minerals. He's got 3,500 gas. He's got 36 cannons, but he has his own main getting obliterated by half a dozen immortals and whatever stalkers have survived the random cannon shots throughout the map. They're really struggling. We gotta have a whole system. You can't just 
to have a mosh pit every time you want to get anywhere. There's a void ray. They're going for the cannons from the back, but the cannons can just turn around, which is, you know, like pretty helpful. Uh, more stalkers. Whoa, maybe, maybe not. No, oh, he picks it up. All right. Good thing he microed that. Otherwise, that stalker might not have made it. The Nexus dies. Some of the immortals go to the main. They go back down. They go back up again and spin it all around. Going for the main Nexus. There's literally nothing left here. There's nothing in the main. No minerals. No gas. No other buildings. <laughs> the main base. Meanwhile, two. Two. Twice as many Tempests. And once as many motherships. And another. A third Tempest. Three times as many Tempests as we've seen. Meanwhile, more phoenixes, incredible micro, surprising micro, any amount of micro. Two more Tempests on the way, but four Void Rays coming out of Siegfried. He's not done yet. He may not know the situation, but he knows he's not going to give up until every last Void Ray has been voided. Um, or, or, yeah, something like that. They, or unvoid, you know. The legacy of the voids. Anyways, more void rays showing up. Some tempest stalkers trickling in and then dying horribly. But that's the usual move of stalkers. Meanwhile, the siege continues. Unfortunately, it seems the probes are outbuilding the tempest DPS. And the void rays are just... Oh, no. You go tell your friends what happened here. This is your last chance to sue for peace. Otherwise, war and death. Death it is. Meanwhile, what happened to the survivors? Did he recall? He recalled the immortals. 11 kills, 11 kills, 12, 16, 11. The void rays utilizing advanced tactics like flying past the cannons. These tactics have served him very well this game. Oh no, we lost him. Legendary stepped away. His pizza rolls were finished. He had only allotted 24 minutes for this game. He's actually using his oven to bake the pizza rolls. It's like, why, if you're gonna put that much work into the pizza rolls, why wouldn't you just get something that was meant for an oven and not a microwave? No, pizza rolls are much better, bro, if you bake them in an oven. If I wanted to put effort in, then I wouldn't be talking to your mother. But now we're here. Void Ray is going to work. The mothership has just been kind of chilling in this corner with the two casual tempests. The Void Ray, ah, shield batteries, he recalls. Where? What? Okay. Um, the Tempest, the shield batteries are almost on it. The Tempest falls. And so does the Void Ray. The story of the Tempest has finally ended. The Odyssey. I, Legendary is down to 74 supply, though he has technically enough money if he could rebuild any production, but the bingo strat doesn't look like it's gonna come to fruition. He's finally killed the Nexus here for the second or third, I don't know how many times, but maybe the last. Legendary has mined out multiple bases. He's down to 63 supply. The probes are still rallying here, not that his income is really important. Most of the first few bases that were mined are now gone, mined out. Everyone calm down. A fleet beacon, as Siegfried is like, well, I tried to avoid it. All my friends who haven't played StarCraft for eight years who played in Wings of Liberty and were Diamond when Diamond was, like, what you would get if you played for two weeks because you couldn't get... Anyway, uh, they said if you make carriers, you're a noob. It's like, well, you haven't played a ladder game in eight years, so I think you might be the noob. Well, he took that to heart because, one, he has friends. First mistake. Second mistake, he picked Protoss because now he faces... Um... I emotional despair. I don't know where I was going with that. Anyways, but Siegfried doesn't know where he's going with anything either, so I guess we're that's about even, right? 
He's going for the last pylon. The Immortals. The interpretive dance move saying, please get the fuck out the way to the Stalkers. The Stalkers say, no. And now we're here. And meanwhile, there were Void Rays, but you got to keep them in reserve so they don't get tired. But the attack continues forward. The Tempest. Two Tempests. Never, never three, never one, except for those times. But two Tempests. They charge up and burn through a, a Phoenix and a Tempest. And then they think about what they've done and turn their heads in shame. But triggered back into action again. They might not have their prismatics aligned, but their their hearts on the other hand are set on victory meanwhile stasis wards still somehow connect the mother ship not targeted but a whole lot of the void rays great time warp there to zone out legendary's holding he's building more carriers he's got plus one plus two plus three but plus one is ground armor which okay he's full defense meanwhile Siegfried has a probe on the other side of the map. We face the enemy. We face the enemy. So when the Void Rays turn away, you know that's them showing shame. Uh, the Interceptor's distracting the Void Rays, but there's only one carrier, so we can kind of just kill the Interceptors. I don't know what he attacked there. I think he may have just killed his own Stalker, but I'm not 100%. I, w I don't blame him. A after what these Stalkers have pulled, ugh. The siege continues. The the kinetic, what is it? Resonance coils and the kinetic overload or whatever it's called. The, the Tempest have cool attack names. Why do the Protoss seem to have the coolest attack names? Carriers had Graviton Catapult before. Uh, the Phoenix Range, Anion Pulse Crystals. And Ion. And Ion, that sounds science-y, right? Like, you take an ion, you take another ion, they have a happy relationship together, and explode in a ball of... Oh, wait, that's Templar. That's Templar. My bad. All right. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the probes, what he has left. Legendary has 30 probes, and one-sixth of them are tasked to the Protoss core of engineers that will build up what they can of these defenses but this time the most anti-cannon army pretty much you can get you've got void rays you've got stalkers you've got immortals but do you have attack move that at the end of the day that's going to be the question the time warp is helping lifts up some immortals here come the phoenixes he'll pull back look at the deal with the phoenixes the phoenixes lifting the immortals the tempest shooting those immortals in the air. I'm not sure if that does more damage or if they still use the ground attack, but the battle continues. Shield batteries on both sides, but they're running out of energy, and who's gonna be making a gas station run for more refills? There, there's multiple pot. That's not a wall. He can easily get through there with more probes, and when will he? Whose probes? Legendary is cannon rushing towards the Stargates! Legend- Are we gonna mine out this map? Is that actually on the table right now? We've mined out several bases. Oh, the probe is stuck! This is within- This is obviously within vision range. But Siegfried has a lot. It's been a lot. This game has been a lot. Oh, okay. You're like a wall of cannons. That's a metaphor, right? No. He just goes for the pylon. A lot of cancels. He's going for the other pylon, which, you know, probably isn't as smart, but he gets it. Meanwhile, the mothership throughout all this only has five kills, but it's facilitated. It's been an accomplice in so many more murders. Dozens. Hundreds, maybe. As he's killed 324 units. And I venture, I, I would stand to say probably at least a hundred of those have been directly facilitated by this murderous mothership never get in your own hands dirty instead letting other people do it like i don't have hands 
I'm a big ass ship that floats around and cloaks everything. It's a metaphor. Unlike cannon walls, the battle continues. The supplies are evening up. GG, man! Siegfried just taps it out. Legendary holds. It, and it's over. It's all over. That's it. That's the end. That's how it ends. After that, after all of that, 110 stalkers, 83 cannons, 24 shield batteries, 47 defenseless innocent pylons. It's over. Really not that many resources lost, but 35 minutes of pitched battle behind, between the lines of cannons and batteries and probes. Protoss against Protoss, brother against brother. But Legendary brings home the fleet making. Hopefully you enjoyed. What do you think? What do you think? Star which Stargate unit was your favorite in this match? And we're counting motherships. I do have to point out, I'm actually going to go back for a moment. Siegfried tapped out 10 seconds before his mothership finished. Which, you know... While Legendary <laughs> got all these armor upgrades and shield upgrades, the one defense upgrade it seems like he truly had at the end was plot armor. Thank you, Day9, for lending it to him. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this experience of Bronze League Hero.